What's the difference between puffins and penguins? Puffins and penguins are some of nature's most recognizable water birds thanks to their fascinating looks, behavior, and ecological roles. But how does one tell them apart? What are some of the key traits and characteristics that separate penguins from puffins? Well, that's what we're here to find out. So sit back, relax, and enjoy as we explore all there is to know about these incredible birds. Puffins Puffins are water birds from the Fraturcula genus. This genus is, in turn, part of the Alcidae family, along with mirrors, auklets, mirrorlets, and guillemots. There are three puffin species within Fraturcula. We have the Atlantic puffin, Fraturcula arctica, tufted or crested puffin, Fraturcula cirrhata, and the horned puffin, Fraturcula corniculata. As the name suggests, Atlantic puffins mainly live in the North Atlantic. The other two species live in the North Pacific. Puffins are medium-sized birds with stocky builds and predominantly black, dark brown, and white plumage on their bodies. Their heads and faces have similar coloration, though beaks are pretty colorful. The feet are orange. As a result of this somewhat vibrant coloration, puffins are sometimes nicknamed sea parrots. The word puffin comes from the Anglo-Norman word for the cured meat of Manx shearwater birds. The meat is fatty and puffed up, hence puffin. The genus name Fraturcula is Latin for little brother, with brother referring to the bird's plumage, which kind of looks like the robes worn by European monks. The tufted puffin is the largest species, thanks to a body length of 15 inches, a wingspan of 25 inches, and a body weight of up to 1.7 pounds. The horned puffin can be just as long, but it has a shorter wingspan at 23 inches and weighs less at 1.37 pounds. The Atlantic puffin is the smallest measuring 13 inches in length, 21 inches in wingspan, and 13 ounces in body weight. Despite the differences in size, all three species are bona fide seabirds. Their relatively short wings are perfect for diving, while their webbed feet are an obvious sign of their masterful swimming abilities. They fly low and rely on powerful chests to make running starts from the water. These birds are predatory, and they spend a lot of their waking hours scouring the ocean for something to eat. Their diet consists mainly of fish, but they will also go after small marine invertebrates like mollusks, worms, shrimp, and crabs. When hunting, puffins sit on the water like ducks and carefully scan below the surface. When potential prey is spotted, the birds spring into action and dive in after it. Once underwater, a puffin spreads its wings and flaps them, kind of like flying underwater. The birds can dive as deep as 98 feet and hold their breath for up to a minute. Interestingly, Puffins can catch multiple fish in a single dive thanks to their specially hinged jaws and tongues. A puffin can pin fish it has already caught in its mouth using its tongue and go after more fish. The beak works a bit like an adjustable wrench, meaning the upper and lower beak can close in parallel fashion. This allows puffins to hold a row of fish without having to drop or crush their catches. An Atlantic puffin can consume fish as long as 7 inches but most stick to food that is around 3 inches long. This species tends to favor herring, capelin, sprats, and sand eels. A single adult can eat 30 to 40 of these little fish every day. The smaller fish can be swallowed while submerged, but the birds must get back to the surface to eat bigger fish, otherwise they risk drowning. The larger tufted puffin eats larger members of the rockfish community in both coastal and open waters. This species also likes the odd bit of squid, crabs, and krill. Puffins are colonial breeders. They build their nests and broods on the coasts and islands within their home ranges. Large numbers are common, and places like Iceland host millions of breeding pairs every spring. The birds are fairly simple nesters. Most of the time, they dig quick and easy burrows with their robust feet and beaks. Sometimes, they make use of convenient crevices among rocks or take over some other animal's abandoned abode. Males do most of the nest building for the most part, though female horned puffins do help with the digging and interior decoration. Puffins are not overly fussy about lining their nests with bedding, and some couples prefer it more than others. The birds are highly monogamous, and they are very likely to use the same nest site year after year if it proves fruitful and peaceful. After mating, a female puffin will lay a single egg. Depending on the species, eggs may be creamy white, lilac, off-white with multicolored specks or pure white. Couples take turns incubating their eggs for 40 days, then spend another 40 days raising and feeding their rapidly growing pufflings. Young puffins leave the nest after this, then begin lives of adventure on the open water, where they hone the craft of diving for dinner. 
At about four or five years old, the now sexually mature puffins return to land to breed and continue their life cycle. Despite their highly collaborative breeding style, puffins are solitary for most of the time. They live on the open water far from the coast, and this makes documenting what they get up to out there very difficult. However, there's no doubt that a lot of it involves torpedoing into the depths in pursuit of juicy morsels. Of course, while puffins are highly successful predators in their own right, they are far from apex predator status. That means they are very often on someone else's menu. On land, puffins are hunted by people, foxes, bears, and domestic predators like cats and dogs. In the air, there are birds of prey. Owls, eagles, and falcons all love themselves puffy portions of puffin. In the water, they need to be mindful of sharks and killer whales. Penguins Penguins are flightless water birds from the Sphenicity family, and perhaps the least birdy members of the avian world. But they are most certainly birds. They even lay eggs and stuff. Penguins are the undisputed icons of Antarctica, but one species, the Galapagos penguin, lives along the equator. They are perfectly suited to marine life, with sleek body profiles, multiple layers of plumage for insulation, and true flippers where most birds have wings. They even have spiky tongues for gripping their slippery seafood. Like all other birds, though, penguins have feet, complete with toes and claws. Of course, the feet have aquatic adaptations like being webbed and having shorter, thicker bones than similarly sized birds. The feet work like fins, adding to the flapping power of the flippers. Within the Sphenicity family, there are six genera and 18 species. Notable examples include the Gen 2 penguin, Pygocellus papua, the fastest underwater bird on Earth at 22 miles an hour. Then there's the Emperor penguin, the biggest species, which can be 3.5 feet tall and weighs 77 pounds or more. The smallest species is the little blue penguin, Eudiptila minor, which has an average size of 12 inches and 3 pounds. Like puffins, penguins are predators of fish and an assortment of sea creatures like krill, squid, crustaceans, and anything they feel they can overpower. Naturally, larger penguin species can go after larger prey. Of course, these birds also have to watch out for predators like killer whales, sharks, and seals. Luckily, though, there are no foxes or bears at the South Pole, otherwise these flightless land-nesting birds would be in fossil form right now. Interestingly, scientists regard the presence and absence of land predators as a core differentiator between how puffins and penguins evolved. Both birds have similar lifestyles, diets, and breeding strategies, However, puffins had to evolve and retain the ability to fly to survive in the north. Meanwhile, the lack of land predators allowed penguins to become highly specialized swimmers and hunters at the expense of flight. And once you see penguins in motion in the water, you'll see that the trade-off was worth it. They are as majestic, graceful, and agile as any bird in flight, and their countershade camouflage makes them extremely successful hunters. In the case of penguins, Countershade means their backs are dark to blend with the depths, while their fronts are pale to blend with the sky when seen from below. One particularly clever adaptation is how penguins' feathers form a thin layer of air when in the water. This air casing has the double benefit of insulating against the icy cold and providing a natural buoyancy. The buoyancy aspect also adds to the underwater maneuverability that comes in clutch when hunting or being hunted. After spending half the year at sea, penguins return to land during the warmer months to breed. A few species, like the emperor penguin, breed in the heart of winter. Spring and summer in the southern hemisphere occur from October to March, while winter spans from May to early August. They typically form colonies that range from a few hundred couples to hundreds of thousands, depending on the species. Yellow-eyed penguins don't form breeding colonies, though. Colony life is highly social as shown by the incredible range of vocalizations these birds make. Love calls, warning calls, nurturing calls for chicks, and more can be heard up and down the coasts occupied by large penguin colonies. Penguins are monogamous throughout a single breeding season, but year-on-year -year fidelity varies much more than with puffins. King and emperor penguins lay a single egg per brood, but all other species lay two. Again, parents work together to incubate eggs and raise young. Baby penguins are the cutest thing you'll find in Antarctica, and they are reliant on their parents for survival. Both parents go on hunting expeditions to feed the chicks, and these trips can take several hours, which increases the risks of nest predation. Luckily, some of the larger species have workarounds, such as nurseries made up of chicks supervised by a few adults. 
Nurseries allow most of the other parents to go out to feed and find food to bring back for their babies. Penguins are a worldwide cultural phenomenon despite, if not because of, their remote Antarctic home. They are popular in media like films, cartoons, books, and of course, documentaries. <laughs>